I studied in China and then I got to know a lot of about Chinese instruments as well when I was studying um, uh, at the Conservatory of Music. So I got to find out that actually a lot of Chinese traditional instruments are very similar to Armenian instruments. And for example, when I was studying, I didn't know that sona. A lot of people were thinking that, oh, maybe you never heard sona in your life. And they were like, oh, you're going to be so surprised to hear the music. And I heard, I'm like, I know it. And they're like, how come? I was like, my country has the same instrument too. And then it took me to realizing the identities of people and human cultures are so connected and you can find out through culture and through music. That's why, even though you never hear any Chinese instrument, when I hear the Gujong for the first time, I feel something, I cannot explain. Some, some kind of connection, it's like I know this, this sound, this quality, this kind of uh, vibration, long time. So I think, yes, um, like now I play Kalangu. Kalangu is really similar with, uh, uh, of course, the sound is different, but the foundation is like a uh, Chinese big drums, the Marshall Trum or Tagu. Same principle. Kalangu. Yeah, Kalangu. Number you just did. Was it was for like uh, I would say maybe calm. It's a zuga. Okay. Or kenema. Say kenema. So I'm really talking. It's the same as Chinese music as well. When I was listening to what Simon just did, it made me think of the bendings on the guzheng yes. strings. Mm. And it's also Absolutely. a way of speaking because each region has its own way of speaking. Absolutely. It's related to their local dialect. So that's why the bending from Henan province would be different from Shandong province yes. because it's related to their local language. language. And that's just the same as the same. talking drum. And Nicola, you certainly felt the the calling from the Sona as well, right? You've always wanted to write for the Sona. Because yeah, yes, I haven't had the chance yet. I think a Sona is maybe more of an acquired taste for, for some people, <laughs> like, uh, you know, sort of a, a French cheese or a chodofu, you know, maybe <laughs> not, not something that, that necessarily translates, to, um, but as a, you know, an instrument with an extremely strong personality and a sort of outdoor use and its um, dual nature as a, you know, as a funeral and wedding instrument and all these things about it, I think are very interesting. And it, it just besides the, that it can technically do very interesting things.